Now, what is a circular track? Circular track is basically instead of running in a straight line, we were doing races and head starts till now. No? Instead of running in a straight line, suppose people are running in circles, which is what is the case in most like stadiums. You don't have a single straight track, you have a circular track. So, in circular track, the thing that happens is that A and B are running either in the same direction or in opposite directions, and they will meet. If I am doing laps around the circle, they will meet at different points on that circle. So, circular tracks helps you understand where they will meet, how much time will they take to meet and how many different points that they will meet at. Suppose the speed of A is S of A and the speed of B is S of B. Okay, You are supposed to find out uh, if uh, A and B are running laps around uh, this particular circle, where would they meet? Always remember one of the meeting points that they will have will always be the starting point. If they start from the same point, right? that will always be one of the meeting points. So, one way you can be asked is how much time does it take for them to meet at the starting point again? So, if I have to figure out, okay, how much time does it take for them to meet at the starting point again? How do I figure out? Suppose this is a 800 meter track and suppose A runs at say 4 meter per second and this guy runs at say 2 meters per second. So, for running this entire track, how much time would A take? A would take say 200 seconds and B would take say 400 seconds. So, if I have to start, say that, okay, when do they meet at the starting point again? This is the time taken by A to complete one lap. This is the time taken by B to complete another lap. To find out the time at which all, like there are say C, D, any number of people. First thing that we have to do is find the time for each one of them to complete one lap. The time taken for all of them to meet at the starting point will be the lowest common multiple of the time taken by each one of them to complete a lap. So, in this case there are only two runners, so it will be the LCM of 200 seconds and 400 seconds which is basically 400 seconds. So, they will meet again at the starting line at 400 seconds. Okay, This is the basic idea. This is basically how much time will they take to meet at the starting point again. That will be the LCM of the time it takes for each one of them to complete a lap. More commonly, it's, that is not what is asked. More commonly what you are asked is, how many different points do they meet? What is the first point of meeting or second point of meeting or third point of meeting? So, there is a formula over here which is based on relative velocity. So, suppose that this is the uh, same this and suppose speed of A say 5 meters per second, speed of B say 3 meters per second. Okay. If you are asked, okay, if they are running in the same direction, both are running clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, in how many different points would they meet? Now consider, okay, they are starting at the same point, they are running both counterclockwise. How many distinct points can they possibly meet at? Okay, this guy completes, say, this is, uh, say, 1000 hundred, hundred, uh, like, meters. Okay, in 5 meters per second, so in 200 meters, he is completing the whole lap. In this guy is 100, okay, not a very good, this 5 meters, say, 2 meters per second. So, in 100, uh, if this is 1000 meters, in 200 seconds, he is completing the whole lap. In 200 seconds, uh, while S completes one whole round, A has come over here already. B in 200 seconds would have covered only 400 meters, still here. So, A has completed one whole round, he has come back over here and B has gotten only like till 400 meters. Then, let us say that S again starts running. Okay, How much time would it take for him, both of them to catch up again? What would be the point at which they would catch up? So, let us consider. Over here, he is now running again. There is a distance of like say 400 meters between them. The relative velocity is 5 minus 2, that is 3, 3 meters per second. 400 divided by 3, that would be basically the time it would take. 400 by 3 meters per second, uh, 400 by 3 seconds would be taken. So, 5 into 400 by 3 would be 2000 by 3. So, they will meet somewhere over here. 2000 by 3 is basically 66.67 meters. So, they will meet somewhere over here, the head start or rather the distance between them will be 400 meters, relative velocity will be 5 meters per second minus 2 meters per second, 3 meters per second and they would meet after uh, like uh, uh, 400 divided by 3 seconds which will be this point. Similarly, you will find that another meeting point would be over here which is like uh, if this is 1000, this is 1000 by 
3 meters this is 2000 by 3 meters or two third of the same uh, this so what do you see that when people are running in the same direction when it is 5 meters per second and 2 meters per second there are three distinct meeting points the starting point is one meeting point this is one meeting point this is one meeting point so there are three meeting points there is a general rule for that so if you have the speed is say sa and sb okay and they are moving suppose in the same direction they are moving both clockwise or both counterclockwise. In that case, first thing that you have to do is take the ratio of SA and SB and you have to reduce it to the lowest form. So if you have 10 by 6, I take the ratio, I will say this is 5 by 3. Reduce it first to the lowest form and once you have reduced it to the lowest form, the number of meeting points will be how much? This will be modulus of M minus N. This will be the number of meeting points. In the case of 5 meters per second and 3 meters per second, of 2 meters per second, how many meeting points were there? That would be SA by SC will be 5 by 2, that is in the lowest form. So the number of meeting points would be 5 minus 2. This is equal to how many? 3 meeting points. Now a lot of people incorrectly assume that since there are 3 meeting points, if they start over here, this will be the first meeting point, this will be the second meeting point, this will be the third meeting point and so on. No, it is not the case. As I showed you in this particular scenario, they start over here, but the first meeting point is this one. Then the second meeting point is this one. Then the third meeting point is this one. So it is not necessarily in the same order clockwise. It is not that they will first meet here, then here, then here. First meeting point is actually here. Second meeting point is here. Third meeting point is here. So you have to remember, you can only tell what is the number of meeting points but you can't tell what is the order of meeting points until you actually calculate where they meet until you calculate how much time it takes relative for one to other to actually cover one extra round okay so the number of meeting points if they are moving in the same direction take the ratio cut the ratio to the lowest form the modulus of the difference between those values is the number of distinct meeting points now suppose they are moving in different directions suppose a is moving clock counterclockwise b is moving clockwise what would be the number of meeting points in that case in that case do the same do m by n find the lowest ratio but the number of meeting points if they are running in the same uh, in opposite directions this will be m plus n okay so if they are running 5 meters per second counterclockwise 2 meters per second counterclockwise what would be the number of meeting points 5 by 2 is the lowest form that would be 5 plus 2 that is seven meeting points. Where would they meet for the first time? So basically that would mean that, okay, A starts from here, B starts from here. A, B will cover two seventh of thousand meters. So that will be 2000 by seven meters somewhere. And A will cover 5000 by seven. So that would be the first meeting point. So you can basically figure out what is the first meeting point, but it will know there will be seven meeting points, but they need not be in the same order clockwise. So you will suddenly find here, then here, then here, then here. They will be in any order. But you can just tell from this particular formula how many meeting points are there. So this is the formula for the number of meeting points in circular tracks. If they are running in the same direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, then you take the difference in the uh, difference of their speeds. Difference of their speeds when you are taken the ratio to the lowest form, then take the difference of the speeds. And if they are running in opposite directions, you have to take the sum of M and N. 